Hey guys, it's February 18th, 2021. I'm going to show you how to make a Velham dedicated server um, on Linux. Um, you can use this, you know, if you've set up your own node, this is running locally, you know, on your network, or if you bought a server, um, it's pretty easy to set up. The game is pretty easy to run on very minimal hardware and, you know, do this versus having to pay for it. Um, a managed server that already installs Velham for you. This is probably just a better way to do it. Um, and it's pretty easy. It probably takes 10 to 20 minutes to get it fully set up and it's pretty resilient, updates itself, etc. So I've made a gist basically that shows you right here exactly how to do everything in a text file, all the commands. Um, over here I have, I'm basically uh, shelled in into my, into my node. I have a VPS running and then down here I have WinSCP so I can actually transfer files from my Windows machine to my node. Um, you want to basically just I believe just like create a new session, put in your IP details and then put in your root username password to then have it open on the right here. And then you can drag files, you know, to your Linux server and then it's there. So how do I do this? Okay. So what you want to do, um, first is let me move this here is you want to create a steam username so that you, whatever you run with your server is running in a specific user. You don't want to give it elevated privileges and run it on root. Make a user, don't elevate everything, it's just good practice. So run this command, it's gonna prompt you for a password. Make sure you remember it when you enter it because you're gonna use it later. Um, you're gonna give sudo access to this user so that it can run some elevated commands. So run this command that I've highlighted right here. And then you wanna run switch user to steam. So I'm gonna just put that in and now I'm in the steam username. So automatically it's gonna put you in this directory which is slash home slash steam. This is your user directory. Um, next thing you want to do is you want to install this dependency. This is for Steam command line. Um, it needs this to do whatever it needs to do. So this is from the Steam documentation. You can read it here. I've linked it. You need this. So just run this. You need to use the sudo command. I've already put in my password in, but for you, you would have to put in whatever your password was when you run sudo. It will ask you. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to make a Steam directory and then CD into it. So let me just do this part. And now um, you want to actually get the Steam command line. So this is what you have to do. You basically download it from this place. You get a zip file and then you unzip it and then you land, you end up with these files and the Steam command line. This is the important file. This is what you use to actually use the command line. Um, next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and install Valhelm. So I've already done this, but what you need to do is basically get out of here. CD dot dot create a Valhelm server directory. It's good to keep organized. And this is where you can actually install the Valheim server application. It's a different from the actual Valheim game. So once you've done that, you want to run this command here, which is going to basically run the steam CMD that is over here. It's going to log in as anonymous. You don't need to have a username, you know, dedicated server is free. You're going to force install to this directory that you've just made the Valheim server. Um, and then you want to basically update or install. It's going to, this is how I actually update my application as well. I'll show you this later. This is the app code for the Valheim dedicated server. Then you want to validate the files and then you want to exit the command line. You want to be stuck into it. It's interactive. So when you run this, what's going to happen, it's going to take some time. It's going to create a oh, CD Valheim server. It's going to create a bunch of files here. Um, this is the configuration for the dedicated server and all the stuff you need. So it's pretty cool. So I'm going to CD dot dot. Um, next thing you want to do is create a Valheim persistent folder. Now this is optional, but I would say this is important when you're creating services, you want to make sure that all your state is in one place and here it's stored to disk. Um, and if you're importing a world, you want to put the, the world in here. So let me show you kind of what the directory looks like. I mean, I have it open here as well. Um, it has a world screenshots and characters folder and like these lists. So what you want to do simply, is uh, drag your world in. So if you're using Windows, it's gonna be in this specific path. If you're in Linux, it's gonna be in this specific path. So I already have it open. I don't have it open in my Explorer, unfortunately, I closed it. Um, but let me show you on a different thing. So I don't show you all my files. Let me just quickly show you how to get there. Um, this PC, local disk, users, your name, app data, local low iron gate Valhelm, and basically this is the path and then you can go ahead and just like drag this to your server and then 
your server will have it. The main thing is that whatever your that these dot FWO files, I've already I have a different like server and world in here. This is my on the right is your is what's in your Linux node. Um, this is the name of your world, the Marley FFO. Marley is the name of my world. So when you created a game, created a server, and you, or even solo experience on Valhelm, you put a name in. This is the name, and you need to reference this later. So yeah, this this is the structure. You can see that this is what I have now in CD Valhelm Persistent. Cool. So I'll close this now. What you want to then do also is make sure that you have read and write access to this directory. Um, when you drag things over from Windows, my permissions got messed up and then the server was silently not serializing, not saving the stuff to this folder. So this was a huge bug. I, I lost some hours of work in the game. So make sure you run this command, which basically gives read or write access to everybody on your machine in Linux to this folder. So run this command, make sure it's important. I've already done this, run this command. It's extremely important. Otherwise you, your server will not work. It won't save anything, which is bad. When you're, as soon as your server stops, because you got an update, you'll lose everything. It's scary as hell. Um, next thing you want to do is create your configuration. So basically in the Valham server, there is a .sh file, the start server.sh. This is the script that they give you to start the server. You need to make your own. Okay. So I've already put the information right here for how to make your own. I basically copied this and made some slight modifications. What you want to do is you want to add this line to the top. You have to, it's not there when you, when you use it. Let me show you what the existing file looks like. I use Vim to edit. You can also just edit things in windows, um, like drag it here, drag it there. But, um, yeah, you need to add this line to the top. I have this all in the gist, keep these things as is. And then you want to basically edit this line and you need to point these lines to um, your specific configuration. So like I have it in uppercase here, you need to name your server, call it whatever. This is what you'll see in the steam server window. When you're looking for your server, you set, keep the port as is. You need to then reference your server world. For me, the server world is Marley. Um, so name, name this to what you dragged in the server world it has to be in quotes. And then what you want to do is you want to set a password. The password has to be at least five characters and the password cannot be in the server name. And then you want to make the save directory argument to point towards where you're going to save things. This is the same place where we drag the world in. Um, even if you have a fresh server, it's going to save things here. Super important. Um, dash public one, this should make it public. Um, I thought this would make it so that you can see your server on the community browser, but it doesn't. I also have done batch mode and no graphics. This was, I think this is for performance reasons. I haven't taken it off and tested it. I think it helps. It works as is. I think you should just leave this as is, um, add these in. You could take it out and test it. It will still work, but I think these are for performance reasons. I got this from another guide. So once you create this file, you copy this whole thing. Sorry, everything in here, what you then want to do is you want to make sure that's executable. So again, you want to run sudo chmod to this custom folder that you just script that you just made. And then when steam updates, when you update this thing, every time Valum gets an update, it's not going to edit this file. It's going to edit everything else, but this file will stay the same. So don't worry too much. Um, and then now what you want to do is you want to create this like service this is the last thing you want to do. So we don't want to automatically, we want to automatically restart the server every day at 4 AM. We want to, um, use like, the service lifecycle that Ubuntu provides us versus us trying to run this in the background. Cause if you just run the server right now, the moment you exit your shell, the server is going to stop. So you want to have Ubuntu run this in the background. There's many ways to run things in the background, you know, on Linux, but we're going to use a service because it's um, a lot easier to manage. And there's a lot of cool tools that I'll show you. Um, this video is getting nine minutes. I'll try to finish it quick. So, um, what you want to do is you want to run Vim. You can also use nano or you can drag it in. But you want to basically create this file, Valham server. And I can actually show this to you. So sudo vi. And basically, this is your description of your service. You can copy everything, don't worry about anything. User group is Steam. And then this is exec start pre. What this means is that every time you start your service, it's going to re download or validate your Steam, your, your dedicated server file. So if there's an update, 
it's going to do that first before it launches the server. So this is important because we're going to restart the server. And every time we restart at 4 a.m., we want to see if there's any updates. So it's like, this is why you want to do it. It's, it's before we start, pre. And then this is the important line, it needs to be absolute. Again, you can just copy from me if you've copied everything. This will start your uh, server custom. And then extremely, extremely important, make sure you have the working directory set to this. This is because inside the script, it references something relative. And then make sure the kill signal is sigint. If you don't do this, you're going to be very sad because if you close down the server, which you will every day at 4 a.m. via the next thing I'm going to show you and restart it, it's going to, it's not going to save when you close because unfortunately it sends a different signal, sig term. Don't worry too much about this. This is basically a graceful such shutdown. And uh, uh, if you do this, then you're it's going to give time for your server to save all the data before it closes and then you restart. So make sure you have this. If you don't, you will lose data. The last 30 minutes, every time it, every time the server runs in Valheim, it basically updates itself every, I think, 20, 20 minutes now of the, of the most recent update, but it was 30 before. And then it saves it to disk. When you just close the server with without setting this kill signal, the Ubuntu service will use another signal called sig term, which terminates the server instantly. It doesn't get to save. So you need to use sig int, which will gracefully stop the server. I've had, I ran through this myself. It was a huge issue. Make sure you do this. Make sure you do this. Make sure you do this. So once you do that, you want to do WQ, you save it. Now the, uh, this file exists. You want to then run systemctl daemon reload with sudo. This will basically like, read the data here. So every time you make changes to this folder, daemon reload, you need to run it and it finds this service. And then what you want to do is you want to then start the service. This then starts your server. What you can then do is actually um, do this. Just see the status. So I have it active running um, and everything is working. You should see basically something like this. I know it's kind of small. Um, you know, you can see some of my credentials. Um, but yeah, you should be seeing this. And then what you want to do is you want to do systemctl enable Valheim server. This means that if for any reason your server restarts, it could happen. You're going to restart the service every time your server, like you want to do service boots. This is just a small thing. Um, and then what you want to do, this is again optional, but I would highly recommend you want to restart your server every day at 4 a.m. This is just a good practice to get any updates. You can save time. And in addition, um, it's just good not to have processes just run for a very, very long time. There could be memory leaks. Um, your state is being saved. You want to just restart it. It's probably better for performance. So this is how you do it. You want to go back to your root. So if you do control D or you write log out, you'll go back to root. You then want to run cron tab edit. And then you want to add this line, which will basically restart your server at 4 a.m. Okay, this exact line, I have it right here. You want to add this line. Um, make sure you have a new line at the end of the cron tab. I have two commands here, but make sure you have a new line. So if this is your only line, make sure you put a new line after just an empty space, empty line. So yeah, WQ that shit. Um, and now everything is working as expected. Your service is up. It will restart at 4 a.m. Everything will you know, work for you. Um, this restarts, stops. It will then run the start. It will run the update first and then we'll start the, the service. Um, and then you want to basically um, go to your service. So basically the way you do it, I know I'm saying basically a lot, is go to Steam. You're going to see this view thing. Why is it not? Go to servers. And then you're going to basically add a server and then put the IP port of your, um, like, put the IP of your node and then put the port 2456 two, and try 2456, 2457. For some reason, 2456 wasn't showing up, but 2457 works. Also in the new update, you can do this in game. If you start up Valheim, you can say single player, you can choose a character and then you can go to the server browser and you can then join a dedicated server by putting the IP port in there. In that you can use 2456. But for here, unfortunately, you need to use 2457. I'm not doing it because I don't want to show you my IP. But uh, yeah, you would search this, search this here, find games at this address, then you can double click it, and then you can join it, and then we'll pop up here. Um, then you want to put in your password that you set up in that command line, the thing that you put in right here. That's the password. 
Um, and then it basically it's going to start Valheim automatically. If you have the game already open, it's going to skip all this like starting stuff. Let me just show you. Dun, 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 dun. This is the game. Select your character. Ooga Booga is the name of my guy. Then it will ask the password again. Don't, don't double click when it's doing that save thing because it's going to say it's not responding. It's just taking some time. So don't let it let it do its thing. And uh, now we are in. Cool, right? Um, another thing I want to tell you is that if you press F5, you can go to the um, kind of the console and then you can save from here. So this is something that um, is pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to log out for now. I wanted to show you one last thing inside Valheim persistent. So if I go back, if I switch user to steam, there is Valheim persistent. There is an admin list.txt. You need to basically add, I want to show it because then you'll see my steam ID. I think I should keep that secret, but it's pretty self-explanatory. I have no one banned. So let me just actually show this. You're going to just add a line here after this comment with your steam ID, the way you find it is it's going to be in your, you can Google this, but it's going to be in your steam settings. Oh, I showed my steam ID, whatever. Well, not, that's not my steam ID. That's my account name. It should be view account details. And then you'll see this. So in this place, you want to click this and then you'll see your steam ID, um, on the next thing that it shows you and you need to add that here. So, and then restart your server. When you log in, you'll have admin access and then you can kick people, you can ban people, stuff like that. You can save the server. So that got kind of long. It took 17 minutes. I'm sorry. Um, there's just a lot of things covered. Um, I actually ran into issues with something. I deleted a video because I did it incorrectly. My servers were not saving state. I didn't have read or write access to my Valum persistent. Nothing was working. Unfortunately, um, I made this whole video to, to kind of correct myself, explain everything and I'll link the gist. So hopefully this helps you. I know it took 20 minutes, um, but now that you have the game up, you can enjoy and rest assured it's gonna work. Sometimes the update will happen during the day and you won't see the update um, till the following night. And then when you try to join the server, it's gonna say that the version is outdated. All you gotta then do is go back to your server SSH and just like restart it. Um, I can actually do that for you. So let me log in and I'll show you my IP. You basically can just do what you put in here. You can do service, Valheim server restart. It takes a little bit of time. It's going to restart your application. And remember that when you restart it, it's going to update itself first and it's going to start. So make sure, yeah, if you can't log into your server because of some version difference, it will tell you. Then run this, restart the server. This is generally just a good idea. And then you can also do this. And you can see that it's all running nicely. Okay. So that's the video. I hope this helped. Thumbs up. If it helps subscribe, I'll have more content like this. Um, I like Linux. I like the game. Enjoy the game. I know it's an 18 minute video. I am so sorry.